In a perfect world, WWE stars would be able to leave on the very best of terms, giving Vince McMahon a big bear hug on the way out of Titan Towers as the boss sheds a single tear and thanks them for their years of service. But this ain't no perfect world, is it? I mean, just look at the platypus, for example. What the hell is that about? Truth is, some WWE stars have left the company in ways that not only affected their standing with the genetic jackhammer, but negatively impacted the rest of their careers and, in some cases, had a detrimental effect on their personal lives too. A few of these departures were even so contentious that the superstars involved could never show their face in WWE again. I'm Adam Pacitti from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are the 10 most controversial WWE exits. Join us. Number 10. Lex Luger On September 3rd, 1995, Lex Luger worked a WWE house show in Canada, teaming with Shawn Michaels to beat tag champs Owen Hart and Yokozuna by DQ in the main event. Two days later, Luger showed up unannounced at the Minneapolis Mall of America on the debut episode of WCW Monday Nitro, shocking not only the wrestling world, but also those working at Titan Towers. Incredibly, Luger had been working for WWE without a proper contract for some time, meaning that he was legally allowed to jump ship without issue. Still, the lack of proper notice rattled those in WWE, including Vince McMahon. The company wasn't doing great business in this era, and Lex was one of their bigger and more marketable stars. WWE may have failed to properly make him the next Hogan-esque All-American superstar, but he was still a featured player. Losing him to WCW was a blow and also handed the competition a big victory on their very first Nitro, causing a lot of buzz for the new show. The total package later revealed that he sent Vince a handwritten letter apologizing for the manner of his defection, but it took a long time for him to get back in WWE's good graces. Number 9. Matt Hardy when Matt Hardy discovered that his long-term girlfriend Lita was having an affair with Edge, one of his best friends, while he sat at home recovering from major knee surgery, he was understandably upset. Not only did he vent at the guilty parties directly, but he aired his grievances on the internet via his own personal website and in interviews. This built a lot of sympathy towards him with fans, but not with WWE management. In their view, Matt should have kept his private affairs private, as him leaking the details caused fans to disrupt broadcasts and shower supposed babyface Lita with abuse. Believing that she and Edge had more potential and hadn't done anything wrong in how they reacted to the airing of their dirty laundry, WWE decided to put them together as an on-screen pair, but not before firing Matt. So, just as he was due to come back from his layoff, Matt was wished the best of luck in future endeavors, something that only served to pour fuel onto the fire and heighten his sense of injustice until he was inevitably brought back for a storyline centered on the real-life drama. Number 8. Kurt Angle Kurt Angle was burnt out and falling apart in the summer of 2006. Not only had he broken his neck on multiple occasions, but the rest of his knackered body was starting to feel the effects of a punishing style too. The pain led to painkillers, which led to addiction and a 30-day suspension for violating the WWE wellness policy, but his problems didn't end there. Angle continued to wrestle despite his mounting list of injuries, and things got so bad that he interrupted a production meeting at a TV taping, pulling down his pants to show Vince McMahon his legs and groin, which were completely black and blue, and demanding a meeting at WWE headquarters. At said meeting, Vince produced pages of transcribed voicemails and text messages that a strung out angle had left for him, most of which were of a threatening nature. Kurt, for his part, didn't remember sending them, but the meeting proved to be his end in WWE. He was either fired or quit, or both, depending on which version of events you believe, and he left WWE under a cloud of controversy, leading to speculation about his physical and mental state. Number 7. China China went from being a supporting character to one of the biggest stars of the Attitude Era in just a couple of short years. The ninth wonder of the world made history as the first woman to enter the Royal Rumble and King of the Ring, as well as being the first female Intercontinental Champion. A crossover star, China also appeared in the pages of Playboy and released a best-selling autobiography. She was certainly an asset to WWE, but in 2001, the relationship between the two sides became frayed. Joni Laura, who was women's champion at the time of her exit, felt as though she should be paid as much as top stars like The Rock and Steve Austin, while also feeling that wrestling her fellow women was beneath her. 
Then it was revealed that her longtime partner Triple H had been having an affair with Stephanie McMahon, and suddenly she realized that not only was her working environment now unmanageable, but that her bargaining power had been significantly reduced. Though her and WWE officially mutually agreed to let her contract expire, her leaving prompted much rumor and speculation, and the nature of it no doubt played a part in her never returning to the company. Number 6. Randy Savage it wasn't so much Randy Savage's 1994 departure itself that was controversial, as it was what happened after it. Savage had been transitioned from a full-time in-ring performer and one of WWE's top stars to a commentator and ambassador for the organization. He was still a valuable commodity, but was not content sitting on the sidelines and itched to get back to wrestling. Vince was, at that time, focused on his new generation of stars and intent on pushing younger performers, and so he let Macho Man go to WCW. On the first broadcast after he left, Vince spoke to the camera, thanking Savage and wishing him well in the future. In the years after, however, it was clear that there was some serious animosity built up between both sides. Some points of contention were Savage taking a lucrative Slim Jim sponsorship with him to WCW, and the unflattering depiction of the Nacho Man in those woeful billionaire Ted skits. Others point to the unsubstantiated rumor about a possible incident between Savage and a member of the McMahon family. Whatever actually happened must have been very bad indeed, because just about everyone else who was seemingly on the outs with WWE eventually made their way back, but not Randy. Number 5. Steve Austin By the time he took his ball and went home in 2002, Steve Austin was running on empty. He was feeling the effects of a career that was always on borrowed time following a major neck surgery, but he was also mentally exhausted and creatively unsatisfied with his position in the company, as well as the direction of the company as a whole. He publicly vented these frustrations, including on WWE internet show Bite This. He also no-showed the post-WrestleMania 18 Raw, an indication of what was to come. A couple of months after that, Austin was asked to put over Brock Lesnar in a King of the Ring qualifying match on Raw. Not willing to arbitrarily lose a match that had the potential to make some serious money months down the line, the Texas Rattlesnake balked at the request, and rather than show up to work, he flew home to Texas instead. From there on, there was something of a standoff between company and performer, with WWE going on the offensive by trying to publicly assassinate Austin's character with a cutting speech from Vince McMahon on Raw, as well as a hit piece on the show Confidential. Stone Cold would return, of course, but things were pretty damn tense there for a while. Number 4. Jeff Jarrett Jeff Jarrett controversially left WWE not once, but twice. The first came in 1995, as Double J took off for Memphis after his classic with Shawn Michaels at In Your House 2 due to creative frustrations, particularly the decision to break up his partnership with the roadie. He came back for a couple of months, left again for WCW, and came back again at the back end of 1997. His contract expired the day before he was scheduled to defend his intercontinental title against China at No Mercy 1999. The day of the show, Jarrett, who was once again heading for WCW, demanding that he be paid money owed him, such as pay-per-view bonuses, before he did the honors on the way out the door. Vince McMahon acquiesced, and the Chosen One lost the belt as planned. Vince may have relented, but he clearly wasn't happy about it, and publicly fired Jeff live on Raw after WWE had purchased WCW, making it clear that he did not have a future there. Jarrett kept busy with TNA in the meantime and wouldn't return to WWE until 2018. Number 3. The Ultimate Warrior I know what you're thinking, which controversial exit are we talking about here? The tempestuous relationship between WWE and The Ultimate Warrior resulted in the former WWE Champion leaving the promotion under less than favorable circumstances on three separate occasions. The first time in 1991, Warrior was suspended and then quit immediately following SummerSlam. About six weeks before the event, Warrior had written to Vince making a series of demands regarding money, his positioning on the card, and schedule. Vince placated him, but only so that Warrior would fulfill his commitment and work the pay-per-view. He came back at WrestleMania 8, but was gone again by Survivor Series after management were tipped off that he as well as Davy Boy Smith were experimenting with human growth hormone, something that wasn't going to fly while the federal government were in the middle of an investigation. He was suspended, no-showed some dates in protest, and was fired. Warrior returned a final time in 1996 for a short and frankly disastrous run that ended, once again, due to the star missing dates that he was advertised for. 
The years following his last exit would be dogged by legal action between the two sides before they eventually reconciled. Number 2. CM Punk CM Punk committed what Vince McMahon considers sports entertainment's cardinal sin when he walked out of the company at the post-2014 Royal Rumble episode of Raw. The Straight Edge superstar reportedly had a meeting that day with Vince and Triple H and told them that he was going home. While WWE were initially hopeful that he would make a return sooner rather than later, it became clear that this was not a sabbatical and that Punk was, in fact, done. It took the best part of a year for Punk to share his side of the story, which he did so during an explosive episode of then-friend Colt Cabana's The Art of Wrestling podcast. On that podcast, Punk outlined the reasons for him leaving, which essentially boiled down to his unhappiness with creative, but more so, his deteriorating health. That episode would prove to be especially controversial in its own right, resulting in a lawsuit between Punk, Cabana, and WWE doctor Chris Amman. Another issue that's constantly referred to is WWE issuing Punk with termination papers on the day of his wedding, something that they deny was intentional, but caused to heighten the bad feelings Punk had towards them. Not really a surprise he chose AEW, is it? Number 1. Bret Hart Bret Hart was the subject of a bidding war between WWE and WCW in 1997, but opted to stay loyal to Vince McMahon, signing an unprecedented 20-year contract that would keep him with the organization in some capacity for a long time to come. However, not long into the deal, Vince informed the Hitman that he couldn't afford to honor it and gave his blessing for the Hitman to renegotiate with Eric Bischoff. And so Brett signed a lucrative contract with the competition, but before he left, he needed to lose the WWE title. Vince wanted Hart to do it against Shawn Michaels at the 1997 Survivor Series, but the excellence of execution refused to do the favor for HBK as a result of their real-life grudge, and he balked at losing such a high-profile match in his home country. He was within his rights to reject the proposal too, since he had a reasonable creative control clause for the last 30 days of his WWE contract, but McMahon was determined to get the belt from him come hell or high water, and with the help of a select few others, engineered what would go down in infamy as the Montreal Screwjob. The pink and black attack gave his boss a nice going away present, however, turning his left eye a deep shade of black and blue.